Welcome to this week's edition of the Bailo Report. I'm Jen Bailo. Our guest this week is a candidate for the Rochester City Council District Award 5. And uh, her name is Saida Omar. And Saida, we welcome you to the Bailo Report and uh, ask you first, as a candidate, if you would introduce yourself to our viewers and voters. Yes. Thank you, Jane. Thank you for, for inviting me, first of all, for this uh, 30 minutes um, uh, show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I am honored to be here today. Thank you. Um, Introduce yourself. Yes. My name is Saida Omar, and I lived here in Rochester, Minnesota for over 12 years. Um, when I came to Rochester, in, at, that, at that time, it was, uh, it was not like this 12 years ago, because it seems to me it was small, smaller than this. And the reason I came for was medical. My father, who had a stroke, uh, came to Mayo Clinic. And one of his friends called and said, Hassan, you cannot stay there. You have to come to Mayo Clinic. This is where everything is. So that's, and he, once he heard that, he would not stay in Virginia because that's where he spent almost 40 years of his life. Yeah. Because he, he came from, we all came from Somalia, but he came first to work as a, um, he, he was work, he got a job through the Somali embassy. He was working there. And then the war happened. Um, he lost his job, then um, he had to look for other jobs and meets. So finally, when he put his foot on the ground, um, the stroke happened. After about 2007. Okay. Yeah, that's when the stroke happened. So we came here because he wanted to come to Rochester, Minnesota for Mayo Clinic to see if they can help him for what happened to him. Okay. And, and they did. He had a lot of physical therapy, a lot of uh, uh, doctors in and out. They saw him through the end and 2018 he passed away. Okay. Yeah. He went back to Somalia and he passed away. Okay. Yeah. And you have been here, though, ever since? For the 12 years I've been here with my brother and my sister, who also followed my mom and dad, because we all said we cannot leave them, you know, because they're... My dad speak English, but my mom didn't. Yeah. So we said, we cannot, we have to go. So he came with her, my brother came with them. And then I was in Dubai at the time, uh, working as a, a medical sleep technologist. Okay. That's my background. Okay. Yeah. So once I got a vacation from my job in Dubai, I came to Rochester just to see how they're doing and how is the situation here in Rochester. So when I came and I saw uh, he was alone helping both of them and it was a tough life because of the snow. We're not used to it oh. even though we were in Virginia for a long time. Uh, the snow was uh, too much. So, so I said I, I need to move here and start helping for my mom and dad. 
So okay. we, I'm, I kind of uh, resigned my job, quit, and then moved here with them. So once I came here, we decided to open a business so we can at least manage home and work life because we never ever stopped working. We are working family. And we started um, a transportation company. Um, little by little it grew and I'm kind of the manager and the CEO now. So so, and what kind of a transportation company is it? It's a non-emergency medical transportation. We take people to their doctor's appointment, um, dental, all of that. Okay. Yeah. And you're the CEO? Yes. Okay. When did you decide to run for office? I decided, um, first of all, for that for the last, until 2018, we were after our parents. We were not looking anything because we were working, we were coming home to help them, and we were not focused, even though we knew that Rochester needed some sort of a change. So once my mom and dad passed away in 2018, in six months apart, yeah, six months apart. It was heartbreaking. My mom, she passed away at St. Mary Hospital, and my dad, he went back to Somalia. But we thought that when we brought my mom back here, she was gonna be okay. But six months later, she was gone. But after that, once they passed away, I, we, Ahmed and myself, we started looking around the city and we saw there is a need for a change. Meaning that um, what, made, what made me decide is when I see the community and the housing situation, it's too much. You know, there is a family that's seven or eight people, they cannot stay two or three bedroom apartment. And you cannot find four bedroom apartment. And if you find a town home that they can afford, it's only two or three bedroom. Yeah. yeah. So there, is, there, there should be a change for the people. There should be a change for the, um, the people that's, um, low income, yeah. yeah. there should be something that they can afford. And if a family of seven with their grandparents that's around and they wanna take care of their grandparents, they can't because they, the grandparents has to live somewhere else. And mm -hmm. it's like going back and forth, back and forth, mom and dad, they're tired. You know, they, they cannot take care of their home because their father or mother is living in another bedroom. So they have to go back and forth. So that's one of the things when I decided that something has to change within the city. I know, I know that that is everyone's top priority in this city yeah. is affordable housing. Yes. But you're the first one to bring the fact that you need four bedroom yes. housing that's affordable yes. for a family. For families, yeah. There is a lot of families that live in a low income housing and it's three or, and they cannot afford. And right now the rental is like 1,200 for two bedroom yeah. in Rochester. You know, and the low income housing, they don't have like, all the apartments that I've been to, some of them even is not livable, that the people are living. Oh. It's not, it's not uh, clean enough. It's not, um, you know, it's heartbreaking. Something has to change on that end. 
Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you on any of the committees that are working on additional housing? No, no, but I've been to one of the meetings uh, from the county that uh, they were talking about that they want to build affordable housing and they got a, a budget for it. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I, I'm not. But you're going to work with them? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. And so then you decided you would run for city council. Yes. How did you decide that? Why not that, the county board? Yes, that, that was kind of a surprising because uh, I, was, I was thinking about it, that the city needs somebody that people will relate because I've been through, I've been seeing them because I work with them. You know, I take, like today, we were short of staff. So I had to go out there and drive. And while I'm driving, I'm talking to them. Ask, I mean, anything can come out, whether it's housing, whether it's jobs, whether anything, for that 10, 15 minutes drive. OK. Now, when you say what you want to do as a council person is work on housing, number work, one? Yes, work on housing, youth and, um, and young adults also. Some of them, they don't have, I've seen young adults that have bachelor degree and they can't find a good job. Some of them are being told, um, you are overqualified. Yeah. Some of them are, are told, you are underqualified. So they need some sort of a mentorship that can help them and take care of them and lead them. Otherwise, they're going to leave the city and go in another place that can give them what they need. Like, I have few people that left here moved to Minneapolis or moved or from the state to another place so they can get what they're looking for. Plus the jobs they're getting, it's not even going to give them uh, their living situation or housing. Okay. Now, do you know about programs that the legislature has been looking at? the Minnesota legislature that are mentorship programs, yes. like you say. Yes. And you know about them. Yes. I know about them, but um, not, they, they are picking here and there. They're not giving equal all aboard. You know, they're picking one from here, one from there, one from there. It should be, an equal situation yeah. for all young adults that came out of, and they went to high school here in Rochester, middle school, uh, elementary. They, some of them started out elementary, and they went all the way to college and finished their colleges. And when they get back to their hometown, it's like, we don't have anything for you. There's uh, mentor, the mentorship is, it's like, it's one way. They're looking only one direction. Or people are not giving the young kids that needs the mentorship, they're not giving them what they're looking for. Okay, so jobs for young people yes. are qualified and education, yes. additional education opportunities you're yes. looking for. Yes. And, uh, and also, um, in Rochester, if you look around, the kids, they don't have a place. Like, right now, it's summertime. The Y is shut down. You know, they, they, they used to have the Y to go there, play, and everything. But right now, the Y is shut down, so there is the rack. 
and the rack, some of the kids that used to go to Y, is too expensive for the rack. Huh. Yeah. The pricing, it's low income housing, person, if they're in low income housing and they were going to Y, then how could they afford rack? Okay. I see that. I'm trying to think of what you would do for the city council in that area besides let them know that the problem exists. Yeah, the problem exists and it, they need to re build uh, rec centers that people can afford to go there, especially yeah. ch children. You know, otherwise kids are going to be left all over the place. They won't have a place to play. Okay. All right. Now I'm just trying to, what I know of the city council and the uh, responsibilities that it has. And, all right. Are you looking at the budgets? Um, for me, I can look at the budgets because I've done budget through our company, which is uh, right now I can organize what is needed, what's not needed, you know, um, what we can afford and not afford. And through that experience, I can bring that to the table and say, this can work and this cannot work. I, I, can, I can say that and I can look in any budget. Okay, and has this been through your work as the CEO of the travel agency? Tra transportation agency? Transportation. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Before that, I was uh, in a medical field, uh, yeah. sleep technician, and once I done that and came to Rochester and we opened this business, then I was the mainly person that's uh, working for the transportation, the budget, what they need, what can we buy, what we cannot buy, all of that. The council has really recently turned into a full-time job. Are you going to be able to give the time to it? Yes, yes. That's the reason I want to give my 100%. I, I want to be there with open eyes because before it was like a tunnel vision. We were just looking at work home, work home. Right now I'm looking on all sides of, uh, of of angles, I can see what's going on, and I can help the city and the people that needs my help. I think you said you've been attending council meetings. Yes. Yes. And you've attended one, and you plan to be there. There's another one that's coming up that I'm planning to go. Good. Yes. All right. What What would you say your main goal of all of those things would be? My main goal is housing. That's number one. To make sure that everybody has a fair housing, whether they want to own it and buy it or whether they want to rent it. Okay. Because both ends, the pricing is too high. You know, yeah. yeah. If I want to buy a home, I, I'm thinking like 350 minimum. And 350 right now, Rochester, it's not 350. It's 450, a decent home. You know, and somebody who's in a low income spectrum, they they cannot afford that house, 450. And first time home buyer. There is a limit bracket that you can buy, and the city and the, um, the county can help you within the 300. Family of four cannot even get into those house, you know, with 300. 
Okay. All right. Um, what kind of uh, organization have you put together? You are just doing that now. Yes, yes. I, we don't have any organization that's uh, helping us. It's just uh, myself, and I want to help the city. I don't have anybody pushing and saying you have to run. It's just I opened my eyes, and the city needs a change. OK. Have you thought about other organizations uh, besides the city council, the county board? Uh, I haven't. OK. No. Uh -huh. No. OK. What in your background besides your personal experiences can you bring to the city of Rochester? I can bring a lot diversity. I, um, and the city, that's where it's heading. It's diverse everywhere you look. It's changing. I know it is. Yeah. And that's what I can bring into the table. Plus, I, I know where needs with the community, Rochester as a whole. When I say community, it's Rochester as a whole and the low income part of it. I know what I can help on that side. OK. All right. Um, what else would you like to say to the viewers and voters? Um, I can. Tell them that I am. A, um, I've been here, Rochester, again for 12 years. I know what's going on, and I can help. I'm here to help the city and its people. To there, there is a light under the tunnel, and for that 12 years I've been here. That I've, I've been saying the light is coming. The light is coming, but. This time, probably I'm the one that's going to bring that light to people's and what they're looking for. OK. And uh, excuse me. And you're, you're going to get somebody to do your work with the transportation yes. company? Yes, yes, yes. It's already been taken care of. Someone else is doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anything more that you would like to say to the viewers? Um, I would like to say, uh, especially the um, the teenagers that's going out of the high school. I was in a basketball on Sunday, basketball game that was uh, playing Mayo High School, Century. Um, and JM and the Somali school. They were all there playing, but they were all Somali teams that was playing on that game. And I never seen a game like that within the last three seconds. They were tied toward the end until the end and then the last three seconds one of the kids put a three-pointer. So I'm telling them that anybody who is graduating high school, Rochester is your home. This is where you belong. And no matter what, you can do whatever you set your mind to it. Because I'm sitting here, I never thought I would run city council. And I'm doing it because I, I want that. I want to make that change to the community and to everybody. And I'm for everybody, for the community in general. The council is changing too because mostly 
I think, is my personal opinion, that when they increase the salaries, they uh, have changed in the look at zoning. Mm -hmm. Do, are you aware of the uniform yes, development yes, yes. code? Yes, a little bit of it. I'm aware of it, and I need to study more of it. But it, I know it's going on. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they're doing more with street transportation. Yes, which is your field, mm -hmm. but that also would be. Uh, some place where you would be able to bring uh, information to it. Okay. We're down to our last three minutes. Yes. We just got the uh, sign from yeah. Guy Hammernick, who yes. is our technical engineer. Okay. And so I want to give you that time to talk to the viewers and the voters. And use your camera yep. right there, three. Yes. Uh, to the viewers and to everyone who's um, seeing or watching this, um, I'm here because our city needs a change. This city is, is so beautiful, but there is a, you know, when there is a wound and you dress it, and you make it pretty, and it's not healed inside. So that's where I'm coming from. I, I'm going to try to help heal the wounds that's out there. And I want to make sure that everybody in Ward 5 especially, that they can have the housing opportunity that's out there, plus the children and the teens and also young adults for their mentorship. I'm going to push it. I'm going to try to make sure that all of my goals and when I'm there, that's where my focus is going to be. Number one is the housing, um, fair housing and affordable housing. That's where my goal is going to be. Okay, and your name is Saida? Saida Omar. Omar. Yes, the yeah. I, the I, it's read as an E. Okay, yes. and we were pleased to have you here and uh, Thank you. wish you luck. Thank you. All right. Thank you so and much for having me. All right, and thank you for your interest in the Rochester government and uh, the Rochester city of Rochester, the county, the state, the nation, and the world. And uh, we'll be with you again next week, same time, same channel. Have a very good week and a very good night.